So we'll focus on strength and stability, and also exploring life out of our traditional postures, maybe even our mat, to balance out our linear living and also our habits of moving and being. It's great to have the familiar, but it's also really, really nice for the brain and the body and the nervous system to explore new stuff. So we'll start off in a comfortable seated position. So you can be crisscross or kneeling. And we'll start off checking in, dropping down into the body. First by doing a couple head rolls. Just so we begin to soften the space in between our ears. Allow this to be a gesture to soften any overthinking or trying to wrap our head around any certain situation, challenging situation. And find stillness as we drop down into our body. You could place one hand on your heart and one on your belly. Dropping down into ourselves, into our bodies, through the breath. You can take a moment to bring awareness to anything that was going on, any adventures you may have had before you showed up on your mat today. Any activities, any planning. And allow them to fade into the background as you drop and settle more deeply into yourself and into the awareness of your breath. Becoming curious of whatever is visiting or arising. Dropping into a place of exploration and playfulness. And slowly begin to open your eyes if they were closed. Let's warm up the wrists. The extension of our heart's intentions will warm up the wrists to prepare us for um, weight bearing. So like down dog plank pose, really important. So we're going to take our hands into not prayer pose, but reverse prayer pose. So I like to do like a little like lotus flower and flip the fingertips up towards my face. Yeah. And the best you can have the entire back of the hand, best you can pressing in. Relax the shoulders, and for a little bit more intensity, as long as you keep the back of the hand connected, lower the wrists closer towards your belly. Oh yeah, just when we thought we explored all possible wrist warming up, all warm ups for the wrist, we got another. Breathe here, <laughs> soften the shoulders, soften your eyeballs and your faces for three, two, and one, lift the wrist and lotus flowers so you can reach the fingertips down and then peel the back of the hands away from each other. So only the thumbs are together, like a little butterfly. And then around. <laughs> so you're rolling around the edges of your hands, the outline of your hands. Get a little bit more dancing and flowy if you want. Switch directions, other way. Yeah, you can think of this as some kind of offering. Anything you would like to offer up, intention for your practice. And then we'll slowly release, shake it out, shake it down, and shake it up, up and down a couple of times, <laughs> making sure we're not taking ourselves too seriously. We want to invite in a sense of strength, stability, not rigidity. And allow the hands to rest by your sides, however you like. Shoulder circles, but more like from the scapula, from your shoulder blades. So scapular shoulders first, bring the shoulder blades away from each other. So this is not just the arm bones that we're leading by, but the shoulder blades. And then retraction, bring the shoulder blades together. Everybody's favorite. Now be mindful that you're not popping the ribs out. And then forward. Hands could be wherever is comfortable. For some reason I like to have my fingertips flipping back. Two more times like that. And you could change your seat too, or have another block or two underneath your bottom. Let's add circular movement. So bring it forward, bring the shoulders up. This is scapular elevation. 
back retraction, like you're squeezing a peach or something in between a grape, and then drop down, depression, and then forward protraction, elevation, own breath. Make sure you're getting that from the shoulder blades, keeping the back of the neck nice and long. And we'll switch directions. You can think of this as a kind of like a massage or someone's guiding your shoulder blades in a big circle. And you may find there's an area that's a little bit sticky. So approach that area with compassion and acceptance. One more. And then slowly release. Maybe a couple of half circles with your head again. And we'll make our way. Hands and knees, all fours. All fours here. Okay. Circle your ankles, twinkle, wiggle your toes, and get the circulation back if you are kneeling. And we'll start off on our hands and knees. And let's find our lion or tiger, tigress, lioness pause. So side to side. Begin to articulate through your hands. Yeah. Rolling the hands and we'll settle now. Clawing the mat just slightly with your finger pads. Spread the fingers wide. And we're going to bring awareness again to the scapula and hug again to our armpits of power. Yay. Haven't said armpits of power in a while. So now we're going to bend the elbows. Bend your elbows to the side. So the elbow creases will face more in towards each other. Bend the elbows a little bit to the side. And this, if you're gathering in, I don't know, cotton balls or a giant beach ball, you're going to scoop the elbows towards your knees and straighten the arms. So again, bend the elbows slightly to the side. And then scoop your elbows in. And elbow creases will be probably facing more forward. And do that three more times. Rhythm of your own breath. So slightly bend the elbows to the side. Scoop the elbows in towards each other. Like you're squeezing a block. And straighten the arms. Own breath. Good. Elbow creases face more towards each other. Scoop the elbows in. And then press the ground away. Nice. One more time. Elbows slightly out, external rotation, hug the elbows in. Now keep that, straighten the arms. Keep that, reach your right leg back. And keep the toes curled under, belly and ribs in. Keep that, arms press away from the ground, left leg meets the right. So now we're in plank pose with some armpits of power to support us in our plank for three, two, one, downward facing dog, hip creases reaching up, moving any way that feels good. Pedal it out, bending one knee, lengthening the other leg. Let the head go, you can even shake your head out, yes and no. And then make your way onto your knees. You can have a seat back on your heels. We'll do some uh, wrist mobility in between <laughs> anytime you like. So you'll make light fists, circle the wrists around. Nice. We'll meet hands and knees. All fours, finding your tigress, tiger, lion paws. We'll call lion today. Bend the elbows slightly to the sides. Wrap the elbows in and around, and then squeeze the arms towards straight. Like we did seated scapular circles. So you could reach the shoulder blades forward, and then bring them together. Then down your back, press away, protract. Lifting together towards your hips, and separate. Do that one more time, this direction. It's super awkward. We're embracing awkward. Keeping those arms super straight. So as you keep the arms super straight, you have more access. The shoulder blades become more accessible. Let's switch directions. So you do about three, four each side. 
or rather each direction. Yeah, feel those shoulder blades moving towards each other and away from each other. Good, and then again, let's meet center, bend the elbow slightly to the side, and then hug in a giant beach ball with your elbows. So external rotation, press the ground away, reach your right leg back, and then the left coming into your plank pose. Downward facing. Let's articulate through the spine, so we'll bring some wave-like movement to our traditional linear practice. Lift the heels. Articulate through the spine, drop the tailbone, rolling through the spine as if you're coming into like a cat-like posture. And then same, extend, reach the back of the heart forward, and downward facing dog. In one movement, the end of it. Again, lifting your heels, dropping your tailbone, articulate through the spine until your shoulders come over the wrists. Keep the back of the skull lifted. And downward facing dog. Do that two more times. Rhythm of your own breath. So articulating through the spine and maintaining the stability and the strength within the shoulder girdle. One more time. Drop the tailbone, roll, rolling, moving like molasses. And then downward facing dog. Lower down to your knees and any of those wrist stretches you did before of mobility. You can take the back of the wrists or the back of the hands together. Dancing lotus flower. Lower the wrists down. Anytime you need to take a break for as long as you like. And slowly releasing hands and knees again. Through the clink like variations, sneaky strength and clink variations. So bend the elbows slightly. Make sure your wrist creases are parallel to the front. Hug the elbows in and straighten your arms. Belly and ribs soften in, right foot back, left foot back. And this time, keeping the hip point and the upper body pressing away. Spin your heels to one direction, control, and center, side to side. You don't have to go all the way, and make sure the hips maintain a sense of buoyancy, and the arms are straight, and the shoulders are stable. Let's do two more each side. Keep breathing. And slowly lower down to your knees and take a break. Again, any of those wrist mobility exercises we did before. Around the lotus. Okay, the downward facing dog, or we'll set up before down dog. We'll take our time to set our foundation. All fours, bend the elbows slightly to the side. Hug the elbows in. One leg back. Belly and ribs in, then the other. Downward facing dog. Lift your heels, bend your knees, inhale. Flip your right foot forward. Let's get to the hip flexors. Hip flexors deserve some love here too. And also a nice break for the upper body. Fingertips could be on blocks or the ground. And be mindful for this variation. Right knee over right shin and the hips, especially the left side. Maintain, again, a sense of buoyancy. So you're not pressing that left thigh bone down. The left thigh bone is lifting up. And you can extend through the spine. It's like tucking up your chin in towards your chest. Keep the back is so long. So you can think of this as a meaningful boundary. So you're still containing, you're still containing your energy by dropping the chin slightly and keeping the back and neck long for three, two, and one, slowly release downward facing dog, hips up and back. Lift the heels, bend the knees, left foot forward. Crescent, or not crescent, rather a low lunge, back knee lifted. Okay, so follow the back foot, 
top of the right thigh bone melts up. And then from the two halves of your pelvis, extend out through your legs, containing the energy, maintaining integrity through the spine. Breathing here, fully into all sides of your body. Another three, two, one. Now you're gonna walk both hands to the right, make your way into a wide-legged straddle, to the long side of your mat. Bring your toes slightly inward, heels slightly out. And again, the rotation comes from the upper thigh bones. And whatever you like with the hands, you can place the hands flat, elbows pointing back. You could even practice. Shifting the weight slightly forward and let the elbows bend slightly out to the side and then gather the elbows in and then press the hands down as you lengthen a little bit more forward and down. And shoulders from your ears for another three. And two, keep those legs strong. And one, slowly releasing. You're gonna toe heel your feet in towards each other until you come into a squatting pose. So you may need to place a couple blocks underneath, or you may need to roll a blanket and place it underneath your heels. You could also do this with the fingertips forward and the heels slightly lifted. Good. And then we're gonna practice pressing down through the outline of the feet and the heels to lift the hips up a little bit and then lower down. Really pressing through the outline of the feet. Keep on keeping on. Good. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're not just hanging out in this uh, floor frog today. This is more of an active floor frog. This is also strengthening the muscles around the joints so we're not just dumping into the joints. We're not just doing anything. Make sure you're breathing. <laughs> Another three. Pressing down through the foot. Two, sneaky, strength, nice, and one. Slowly releasing, downward facing dog. Might feel like a really good down dog now. Expand, breathe, process what just happened with all that sneaky strength. You can pedal it out. Make your way onto your hands and your knees and some scapular circling again. So you elevate the scapula, retract shoulder blades together towards your hips, press the scapula away, lift. Two more times in that direction. Two more times. And then switch directions, other way. Make sure leading the movement, this movement from the scapula. Great, now we'll cross at the ankles, make your way onto your bottom. Variation of reverse tabletop. You can place your hands however you like, your fingertips, whatever feels better for your wrists. So fingertips could be facing to the side or the back or forward. Feet are hip width distance apart. First, bend the elbows slightly, lift the armpits, roll the collarbones open, and then press away. So you begin to keep the heart lifted. Press through the feet, and we're not gonna lift up as high as you can, but press the hands away so you're not collapsing into your shoulders. Lift the hips, maybe a little bit less than you normally do. And then lower, your butt can touch or tap, and lift. So remember to stay, keep uh, from dumping into your shoulder girdle. So you're pressing the ground away with your hands and your feet. And we'll do this four or five more times, own breath, maintaining an upliftedness of your heart. And you're pressing down as you lift up your hands and your feet, your hands and your feet. So you can see how the shoulder girdle can maintain its sense of stability 
without jumping into it, even though another part of the body is moving. And then slowly ooh, release, have a seat. You could circle your wrist around. Okay, we'll do a little like dancing lion, kicking tiger. Make your way onto your hands and knees. Just in case it was getting too serious. We were getting too serious with our strength and stability. We'll put some of that together. So be similar to how we did in that plank where we sway our hips side to side. Placing your hands. First, let's find our tiger's paws. Or our lion paws, lioness paws. Make sure we have like a sense of uh, sweetness and easefulness in our efforts. Okay. Placing your paws on the earth. Bend the elbows slightly. Gather in. Giant beach ball. Straighten the arms. Okay, and then from there, curl your toes under and lift your knees to hover over the ground. Lift the knees to hover. You're going to shift onto your left hand, spin onto the inner edge of your right foot, and extend your left leg to the right and bring your right elbow to your belly. And allow the hips to lower towards the ground, but without dumping into your left shoulder. So press the ground away like we did. Yeah. And then slowly. Bring your lion to center, knees hover. And the other side. So right leg, moving mindfully. The hip can lower down, but press the ground away so you're not dumping into the shoulder. And then switch. Keep on keeping on, switching sides. So you're not dumping into the shoulder girdle. You're still pressing away. And as you return to center, knees hover. We'll do a total of three more each direction. As you lower the hips, press the ground away with your bottom arm. Keeping the hips relatively buoyant, but hovering over the ground, not collapsing through the elbows, through the shoulders and the hips. Yeah, and see how slow you can go. See how much control you can maintain with a sense of playfulness. So pressing through the bottom shoulder, not collapsing down, and pressing away. And after our last round, we'll meet kneeling. Nice. You don't have to do many of those to create some heat. Child's pose, kiss the ground, return to your breath, or circle the wrists. Now you can even bring your forehead to the ground and sweep your arms back. Rock your forehead side to side, way to play. And let's make our way onto hands and knees. Cross at your ankles and come on to your bottom. <laughs> okay, we're not coming into reverse tabletop, but you could pretend we are. Feet about hip width distance apart. You may or may not need to slide your heels further away or closer in. Addressing the core and the spine so you reach your arms forward. Best you can press the inner and outer edges of the feet into the ground. Lengthen the tailbone towards your knees and then tailbone towards your sitting bones towards your heels. So the pelvis begins to tilt back like you're coming into cat pose. The ribs begin to disappear into your body, but you're using your core as your, as your brakes. And as soon as the head touches, reverse it. Chin in towards the chest. Sides of the waist back, ribs disappear, reach forward. All right, no one saw that one coming. Lift back on up, and we'll do a couple rounds to let you know what's happening. Tailbone forward, reach your sitting bones to your heels. We got that brake system of the core. Ribs disappear into your body, shoulder blades down, and head. Look forward, rounding, grounding through the heels and the feet. We'll do three more. Rhythm, nice, of your own breath. Really exploring some 
mindful, slower movements today. Well, still strong. Yeah, and make sure you laugh at yourself for those areas that feel a little bit more sticky. Oh, yeah. Oh, in control. We're using this practice and movement to explore our habitual patterns of being in movement without any judgments. And we'll meet all the way onto our back. Yay. Keep those knees bent. You can let them, let them rest in towards each other, feet wide. Relax your arms at your sides for a couple cycles of breath. All right. Reach your arms to the ceiling, fingertips to the ceiling. Interlace your fingers. Flip your palms up towards the sky. Begin to lower your arms right before your ears right before your ears. And then reach and extend through your pinky side and thumb side and then connect the ribs down towards the ground. So only allow the arms to lower, not past your ears, as far as you can keep the ribs connected. And then keep the ribs connected to the ground, a little side bending to the right. Breathing here, keep the ribs connected, back of the neck long, center, and out to the left. Bring it to center, lift the palms up to the sky, and separate your hands, release them to the ground just for a moment. Same thing, change the interlacing of your hands. The way that feels like you're holding on to someone else's hand, <laughs> flip the palms up. So the other index finger will be on top. Reach the palms up, soften the rib sides of the waist down. Lower your straight arms, maybe just before the ears, maybe sooner, keeping the ribs connected. This time start side bending to the left. Breathing here. Finding center and to the right. Bring it to center, lift the arms up, separate the hands and release your arms down for a breath or two. Here we have some pockets of fire and we're allowing our body and our breath to settle. Okay. Left arm wherever it's comfortable. Reach your right fingertips, right arm up to the sky. Squeeze your arm towards straight. And then lift your right shoulder blade away from the ground as you reach your right fingertips to the sky. And then lower it down. Do that three more times. Own breath, reach up and lower down. It's gonna be a nice release after all that strengthening that we did. All the muscles we woke up to help stabilize and strengthen our shoulders. And we're going to add on. Again, lift the right shoulder blade up. Reach it across your body like a 45 degree angle on the upper back begins to rotate also to the left. And reach back behind you. Big circle around until the right arm reaches to the right. And bring it up to the sky again. Do that three, four more times on breath. Right shoulder blade lift. Reach like a 45 degree angle. So the thoracic spine begins to rotate. Big circle behind until you reach to the right. Own breath and you find center. So shoulder blade down to the ground. Lift, cross the body, rotate with the thoracic spine. Big body circle around. One to two more times. Just freeing up our wings, reaching around. This area tends to get kind of sticky throughout the day. And after your last round, you can pause and notice, release your right arm. Notice if there's a difference between the two sides. Oh yeah, I feel like my right side of my body is closer to the ground. Let's explore the left. Left fingertips up, 
Squeeze your left arm towards straight. Ribs soften down. I just noticed mine popping up. Reach left shoulder blade up, fingertips to the sky, and lower it down. About three, four more times. Lifting and lowering. And now, adding on, keep that arm straight, lift the shoulder blade, blade, and then bring it across to the right and allow the spine to also rotate around. And then reach overhead and around to the left and up to the sky again. About three, four more times like that. Lifting up and across. And around. On breath. Keeping that arm super straight, best you can. So you lift the shoulder blade up, across, around. And around. And after your last round, after your last round, let the left arm go. Noticing any shifts or changes. Now feel free, any other shape or posture you need to round out your practice. Matt will come right into Shavasana. You can extend your legs. Take up lots of space. Give yourself a few glorious moments to settle and to marinate in that internal yoga movement buzz that you created. The non-doing just as important as all the doing. Soften from the inside out as you accept the support of the ground, your external support, and the internal support of your breath. You're no longer controlling the breath. Doing a quick body scan, noticing where you are holding on, where you're still holding on, where you don't need to hold on, whether it be in the face, the neck, the shoulders, your belly, your hips, your legs. Invite more space in between your fingers and your toes. More space in between top and bottom teeth. your nose, your eyes, and your ears.
You stay here as long as you need to. You slowly begin to deepen your breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And gently turn your head side to side. You can take a big body yawn, bring your legs closer together, reach your arms overhead. Do a little side bending. And with awareness, bending your knees. Gather them into your chest. Big hug of gratitude for investing this time on your mat. With awareness, roll on over to whatever side's calling to you. Pause there. Head is the last thing to come on up as you make your way to a comfortable seated position. Overlapping your hands on top of your heart. Eyes could be closed or soft gaze. Think of one thing in your life that you are grateful for, no matter how big or small. And we'll end together one cleansing breath. First, empty out all the air from your lungs. Inhale, fill on up, lift your heart up into your hands. Keep your heart lifted, exhale, ha, ha. As always, gratitude for practicing together. May it all be a benefit to us and everybody else around us. Namaste. Wait.